Welcome to the Winthrop Law Second Quarter 2024 Market Review and Outlook. I'm Andrew Murphy, Co-Chief Investment Officer. Today I'll talk about how only a few stocks drove the equity market to another new all-time high. I'll discuss opportunities in fixed income, and then I'll review our short-term outlook and our long-term investment philosophy. Please visit our website at winthropwealth.com to view the full written version, and to learn more about our total net worth approach, which combines both comprehensive financial planning and investment management. Let's get to the video. The equity market rally continued to roll in the second quarter, as the S&P 500 increased by 4.3%, bringing the year-to-date gain to 15.3%. The market reached another new all-time closing high of 54.87 on June 18th. The return in the quarter was driven by moderation in several inflation indicators and spectacular earnings from several of the largest companies in the world. The bull market is alive and well. After declining by 25% throughout 2022, the S&P 500 has increased by nearly 57% since mid-October of that year. And going back to the second quarter, market leadership narrowed as two of the largest stocks in the index, Nvidia and Apple, did most of the heavy lifting. Together, these two stocks accounted for nearly 75% of the S&P 500's quarterly return. Asset classes that contain the mega-cap growth stocks, like Apple and Nvidia, performed well, including large caps and great, while most others lag. Mid and small caps, value stocks, and developed international were all negative. Narrow performance in the quarter is a great example of why we construct diversified portfolios and tilt toward the areas we feel will provide the most potential benefit. Our view is that diversified portfolios can lead to more consistent and less volatile results than a single asset class. Those who are under diversified likely feel like a genius or a fool right now, depending on how much they own in those top performers. And once the market inevitably rotates, so will the mental health of these uber concentrated investors. We prefer not to ride that roller coaster. Please see our client question on the principles for long term investing. During the quarter, yields increased across most of the Treasury yield curve after rising in April and then pulling back as several inflation indicators began to moderate. For intermediate term bonds, the Bloom U.S. Aggregate Bond Index, or the AG, increased by 0.1%, even though the 10 year Treasury yield increased by 20 basis points. Bond prices move inversely to interest rates and credit spreads. A coupon or interest payments for the AG Bond Index are now estimated at about 3.3% annually. So performance was positive in the quarter as coupon payments received were enough to offset the decline in price caused by higher interest rates. Year to date, the AG is now down by about 7 tenths of 1%. Going forward, intermediate term bonds are still an attractive investment opportunity in our opinion as the yield to maturity on the aggregate bond index ended the quarter at 5%. Short-term Treasury yields, including the 3, 6, and 12-month, are still above 5%. According to Bloomberg, market pricing indicates about two rate cuts this year. Once the Fed starts cutting the federal funds rate, short-term Treasury yields should also decline. In other words, investors should look to lock in 5% yields while they can. If interested, please speak with your advisor about our cash alternative strategy. Our short-term outlook has been cautious since the market began to run toward all-time highs late last year. For the stock market to maintain its positive momentum, we'll need economic, inflation, and earnings data to continue exceeding already high expectations. Thus far, economic data has largely been fine. Inflation started the year hotter than expected, but has recently begun to moderate. Earnings have been strong, especially from AI-related companies. And right now, we see the biggest risks to the market as a reacceleration in inflation, or anything that challenges the earnings growth of the AI leaders, especially in video. Moving forward, we know that market declines are common, and we believe that a pause or pullback to shake out some of the excesses built up over the last several months would be healthy for long-term performance. We try to look for opportunities in every market environment. When markets are selling off and investors begin to panic, we try to take advantage of the environment by tax loss harvesting and rebalancing in the equities at potentially attractive levels. And when markets become extended and investors are euphoric, like they are now, we turn a bit cautious and use these periods as a time to raise cash for upcoming distributions or to take some chips off the table by rebalancing into fixed income. With the stock market at an all-time high, we believe this may be a great time to check off some of those bucket list items and to raise funds for any aspirational purchases you've been thinking about 
or to review your target asset allocation based on your future goals and objectives. Please speak with your advisor to discuss implementing a plan. Our long-term investment philosophy is based on the benefits of staying disciplined, opportunistic, and diversified while striving to mitigate fees, taxes, and expenses. In our opinion, adhering to a structured process and executing on all these components should help keep our clients on track who are pursuing their long-term objectives. Thank you for watching today's video. Please visit our website at winthropwealth.com to view all of our market commentaries and to learn more about our total net worth approach to wealth management.